Well, the reason I've stopped there is because it's so difficult to play. This is a mouth organ in the key of C. What it is, it's really like a piano. So you've got to really sort of be able to play the piano to play a mouth organ. I can play the piano, but I can't be bothered going upstairs and getting it. I brought it downstairs and then I took it back up again. I couldn't find the, um, the adapter to plug it in. But it also buzzes a bit, you know, it makes a noise. And I'd love to play it, I'd love to uh, get my keyboard and start playing it again. I just can't be bothered, I'm too knackered, I can't just pff, fart, you know. It means I have to find the adapter and plug it in. It's somewhere down here, I think. But it's buzzing as well, you know. It's like I might get rid of it. I like it to sound perfect. I don't like it to have a buzzing noise come through the speaker, you know. And all that. That's a, a cowboy song. Because like this it goes. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. La 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 la. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. La la. la. Oh. <laughs> you haven't seen what I just saw. Maybe I should show you. Maybe we should just turn it around that webcam. Just. For entertainment purpose, I will. We've got to, I don't know, I find it comical to show you stuff from my life, you know. It's, um, there's, a, there's a chance I can smash my old internet connection up here as well. But, then I got wires up. Oh, this is tight, that. Shit. That's in the world, it's actually. Tear one in half. Don't you know? destroy my stereo system to produce this bit of a film for you. you know? It's ridiculous, isn't it? Why people do these things? Look, computer tool, can we see you, please? Fucking hell. The amount of work I have to do to do anything is just ridiculous. Now I'm going to have to unplug this. This is my best stereo system as well. Look at that. That should cheer you all up. So now I can plug that back in. Yes, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't move anything around because it just destroys the old setup. But of course, Sometimes your setup becomes a bit, it becomes a bit boring, you know. You sit there like looking at the same thing, doing the same videos, you know. It does, it gets, it gets crap. And then there's a chance your computer could fall right off the table there. Not careful. Oh. You get so a bit fed up of it. So what I'm saying is it's quite a difficult instrument, harmonica. Like piano, it's not really that difficult. If you play on the white keys, it's the key of C, basically. Yeah, I mean you can play C, you're playing D minor, D. Well, not D, you can't play D. You're playing D minor. You can play an E minor, you can play F, G. So when you know that on keyboard, it's great for a long period I was playing keyboard. And now I'm kind of fed up of it. I don't want to be doing those same chords, you know, same structures. So I just do that.
It, it might be from, uh, it's not the Magnificent Seven, but it's some Western, you know. La 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 la, high noon. <laughs> That's what it fucking is, isn't it? High noon. High noon's a great film, man. I could pretend I'm one of those music critics, reviewers, you know. Talking about the film High Noon. Oh, it's a great film. Because what happens, the sheriff has to go have a shootout with the gangsters, you know. So he does have to go right up to the graveyard it is. And they're gonna have a they're gonna have a shootout to the death. And he's gotta go and shoot these guys, because otherwise they'll just terrorise all the town, you know. It's one of those films where it's ridiculous, it's like only the sheriff's got the courage to go confront these four gangsters with guns. Like it's ridiculous. Every one of these American cowboy films, like the whole the rest of the town, for some reason they're too scared to get a gun, you know, too scared to protect the property. And they're all cowards. It's just fucking stupid, you know. It's like glorifying this one person, this sheriff, and because he has to take on like four of them, you know, so he has to be like a superhero. He can't just take on one person. Now, he can't just arrest like, say, the grocer in the, in the town for under measuring measures of sugar. See, you don't get that in American Westerns, you know. They've always got to have guns, and they've always got to be like a confrontation. And they've got to have this superhuman courage. And then they ain't got to die, you know. Even though there's four of these others, or a gang of 20 of them, you know, and there's just the sheriff and his deputy. And you believe it, you know, they kind of suck you right into this stupid plot. So you're watching a film and you kind of, uh, you see it developing. And there's always like these gamblers, and they're always bastards, they're always like business people, but the crooks, you know. And then you get like this woman who's always like works in the bar and she's really in love with the sheriff or in love with a guy who's going to be the sheriff uh, but she's kind of not sure about whether she likes him or not and she's like a bit crooked and usually works for the main gangster and she's a bit like a prostitute and a showgirl you know but usually she, she's a great singer and she has to kind of rely on this sheriff upcoming sheriff guy to rescue her and then they have a kiss at a certain point, or the door, because they explain to each other that they'd never make it together, that they both like the freedom more. He likes his freedom too much, and she doesn't, or she likes her freedom too much, and he likes his freedom. Or they both like to be independent, but they can't get together, you know. It's, the American Western is just shit, you know, crap. But what you have to say is that you're watching, and it really, exciting and dramatic that's if you don't suspend the shit you've got to like forget the shit you know the, the, the way the plot the plot has been developed to kind of narrow your brain so you you believe this reality which it's not reality at all it's just shit and like Hollywood pumps out dozens dozens and dozens of these films you know but at a certain point, there had to be some courage, you know. And in a way, it made me the person I am because I used to really kind of believe I was the sheriff or let me believe that I, I related to him. You, know, you relate to this guy who's up against all these bandits, you know. I never really took the side of the bandits. And it's a weird thing, but I reckon there must be people out there who actually like the bandits, you know. I had that once in my whole life when I went to the cinema. Uh, and there could be somebody in the cinema who, who likes the bad guys, you know. I was watching Shakespeare in Love, I thought. No, and it really kind of frightened me. Because when I was a kid, uh, a lot of things that you watch, most of your friends are kind of like Clint Eastwood, and they know what he's doing, you know. He's kind of the sheriff, you know, and he's like taking on the bad guys. So most normal people kind of like Clint Eastwood and Dirty Harry. But of course, one day 
if you're a woman or if you're a man. One day you might be sitting with your boyfriend or friends in a in the cinema and you say, Oh, I'm glad that Sherry killed him and they might all look at you like this. You have to say, No, we wanted the we wanted the gangsters to win. <laughs> then then you've got a serious problem. But uh, so uh I don't know why I got talking about cowboy westerns and all that, but it's this, this, uh, mouth organ. So you know I haven't learned that melody properly, so it's quite difficult to play a melody like that. And then you can play it on guitar. The reason I do it like this is so that I can improvise, you know, just kind of make things up. And really all guitar playing is, that's what it is, you just strum something and it sets something off in your mind. And so you kind of start thinking of some words and you put a little story to it, but it doesn't happen all the time, you know, you kind of build up, so, because in my mind I was thinking I might get my guitar over and do a bit of guitar playing, so I kind of feel more at ease with my guitar, I haven't really got any songs or I can't be bothered, you know, I think all, all musicians have this, they kind of, Sometimes they're busy and they're doing something and sometimes they're not and they don't really know what they're going to do. So you do normal things like go in the kitchen and cook, make cups of tea, go on the internet, watch television, go out, whatever. But go skydiving, who knows, sledging, you know, I'm just joking. But the thing is, I can just improvise around with this, you see, I can just... I mean, those cowboy westerns were great, you know. I know I've said dismissive things about them, but they are great because they really build up the atmosphere, you know, normally. They have like a cowboy, sorry, a, yeah, a cowboy or a Mexican who's asleep like this, right? They have the hat on like that down there. And it's usually a quiet town. And they're in the cantina, you know, in the saloon. Like, like that. And everybody's got their heads down and asleep. Or one of those kind of Mexicans is in the bar. And then sitting in the back, and usually playing cards. Like they're, always, they're always doing sort of bad things, you know, doing things you shouldn't be doing, wasting your money, playing cards, gambling in the afternoon. And then they're drinking tequila and they're unshaven, like me today. And they're like scummy bastards out there, just sit around doing nothing all day. So they're kind of going up and helping the farmers and doing some work and planting and get some salad grown or grow some cabbages. No, they ain't got time for that. They just sit around like that, like, fucking lazy bastards. And so, um, you always have that scenario in these westerns. It's always, more or less, always like that. And the stranger comes into town, you know. So, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. I'm going to sort of finish this in a minute, but I always think of Jimmy Stewart, you know, James Stewart. I, I think it's in that one, High Noon, you know, and he has to kind of go out and sort them out, you know. It's really cool, isn't it? Talk like there, James Stewart. And uh, anyway, they have like all these discussions, and to start with, he's not a sheriff or a deputy, and then 
the appointment because they've got the feeling he'll stand up and he'll have a go with these gangsters and he's got his guns. And sure enough he does, you know, and he goes up and I think he wins his duel, he might get shot in the arm or something, kills them. And then they kind of have these endings where the woman who's in the um, Nice cow I know, I watch coming. I think you're also getting better, yeah. Really, I have to say a lot of Caroline for Hagen and uh, Mike Attinger because they're getting better as a duet, you know. I think they're flipping brilliant, a pair of them. Um, I was just watching them and I thought I might pick up my guitar and do something. You, you just got to wait for it, you know, when you feel like playing. So I'm doing this, like, with the mouth over because it's so close to hand, you know. You know what I'm going to play now, shall we? Don't read it again, do you? Well, that's how difficult playing mouth organ is. To get the different notes, you have to blow and suck in the right places. But you have to kind of know how piano works, really. Like, da da da, ding ding, ding ding ding, ding. So then you're doing the same on the mouth organ and not moving about too much. So it's quite um, an accurate. It's a kind of instrument as an mouth organ where you've got to be very precise and you know what you're doing with those notes it's not easy if i had to challenge anybody to play an mouth organ you fucking can't they're really difficult of course i think young michael attinger could learn to play an mouth organ but he'd be applying like the real musician's skills to learning it because it's not beginners really unless you maybe learn guitar or piano I have I've learned both of those drums drums don't really help but in a way it might do bass guitar I've learned bass guitar really it's like piano so this little box of tricks And what you got to do is you've got to trust in your ear. You've got to kind of think, oh, maybe that's exactly right. That could be exactly how high noon sounds. You know? It does go like... You're my first lady, oh my darling. La 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 So you can see I'm kind of parody and... Uh, it's quite funny you know to um, to think of these songs you know and that they actually do what was he called now that guy what was his name he's a well-known uh singer in america and he's a singer i suppose in hollywood you know. uh that person i've got his name now dex's midnight runners mentioned him a lot now i'm just wondering i can't I can't think of it. It's good when I get it all wrong, you know? Like, uh <laughs> You know, like, you saw the video talking to you and he can't really scramble anything together. He's kind of, oh, uh, he hasn't prepared it. He doesn't know what he's going to say. Ah, uh, you know, like that. He's looking around for his guitar. And it's, can't get it. It's over there, though. I don't know. I haven't prepared it, you see. That's why you have to rehearse to be a musician. You have to keep practicing and learn to improve. And sometimes I couldn't do that for years. Years I used to just strum and do tunes. But you have to kind of do all the song, learn where it changes and why it changes and how to make it end and ups and downs and attack and decay quiet and loud, yeah, it's not easy, singing is a uh, performance, it's not easy. That's why I like them, you know, I like uh, the Caroline and, Ma and Mike, because they, they've been trained, you know, they're trained musicians, so they actually do know what they're doing, and it comes out in the product, because they've just put a comment saying it's perfect, 
And it is perfect. That's only because I've done things, music, and sometimes I can do them perfect, just about perfect to the to the song I'm covering. Like uh, Soul Love, I, I worked it out more or less perfectly. It's really difficult though because Soul Love doesn't it doesn't progress logically like a song should because there's this kind of counterpoise or something going on where there's this other set of notes which have been made by the bass guitar and the electric guitar is creating this other series of notes going across it so it can be very confusing to learn to play that song then you sit there and you're trying to play two parts at once <laughs> you can't do it you've got to just play like one part but it doesn't always work with what we're supposed to be singing so what happened was David Bowie wrote the song on acoustic guitar say or piano he sang it all the way through he knows how it goes but then when he goes to the band they decide to do it differently so when you heard or hear the song it's not going like you think or like the tablature and the lyrics and the music says so that's quite strange because when you get tablature which is the chords to a song they're not giving you the actual notes you know so you in a sense you really kind of do have to read music because then you know what's really going on in that song what the different instruments are doing it's really difficult to do it but then you can do it solo just on your own because I've done it I've done it I've got the guitar now but, so, but I've done it earlier on anyway it's on YouTube so can you guess what I'm gonna finish with high moon that's great isn't it? Because when you hear that music, there does come a point in the film where James Stewart's got to go out and confront these guys, and that music starts up because he's just got to keep walking. He ain't got to turn around and run because he's the only one who's going to take him on. So he keeps going, doesn't he? And that music's going. You see undertakers coming along with his box is ready to pick them up anyway but he survives Tommy James Stewart so it's a happy ending it actually is a very serious film you know well that's it that's my film high noon I'm gonna call this and I'm gonna show you how fast I am on the guns right this used to be a joke in Leeds and my friends or somebody once told me it went like this said, look you see me I'm the fastest gunslinger in the West they said oh yeah you know like laughing at this person I said yeah I said do you want to see me do it again <laughs> you don't get it do you he's got his guns there he says he's so fast do you want to see it again? That's the joke. It's already gone like that. <laughs> Have to see you, my darling. See? You can get away with bluffing. Hi. It's all comedy, isn't it? Come on, you know, it's comedy. Tragedy, tragic comedy. That's why you have music, you know, to heighten the flipping tension. Bye.